G'day mate, how you going? Welcome to the Scott Bonner Made Simple series. In this series of videos, we're going to take a look at a few maintenance and operational items here on the old Scotty 45, so you can keep her in tip top nick to lay down some thick old stripes in your turf. Haha, <laughs> yes! So, in this week's vid, we're going to take a look at a few uh, maintenance items and their intervals so that uh, we can save a little bit of money on parts so that we're not prematurely wearing anything. Rightio, let's jump in, eh? The first item I wanted to cover off is the engine. So quite obviously there are different manufacturers providing different engines that can adorn the top of our Scotties. <laughs> so uh, make sure you're referring back to your uh, operator's manual for service intervals, lubricants, all of that sort of stuff. So I'm running a Briggs and Stratton here on mine and they're telling me I need to service once a year or every 50 hours, whichever comes first. So typically for me, I do uh, as engine service throughout winter time as to not disturb my growing season. <laughs> but uh, yeah, consider um, servicing your engine regularly. The next couple of items we're gonna take a look at are our clutch cone and PTO shaft. Now we do wanna lubricate these via oiling about every five hours or so. So typically for me throughout the growing season, that might be every two to three weeks, something like that. But as we get into the tail end of the season and I'm only sort of mowing once or twice a week, that may be back to say six weeks or eight weeks. So just keep that in the back of your mind. So uh, we're gonna lubricate our clutch cone here via the oiling port just down here. So that's gonna wanna take three drops of oil every five hours. So uh, that can be the same engine oil lubricant you use in your engine. Um, so typically for me, that's an SAE 30. So that'll take three drops in there. Uh, our thrust pad as well will be three drops every five hours. And same as the bearing in here. Now be aware, this may be a sealed bearing. So just pull this housing off and have a look, see what you got. Um, if it is a sealed bearing, then you don't need to lubricate it because they're, they're lubricated on the inside. The next item we're gonna take a look at is gonna be our reel or our cutter bearing. That's the one right down here, uh, either side of our reel. Now what I've got to say here may be redundant because typically what happens is they get these get replaced with a sealed bearing. Um, however, sometimes they don't, you know, and people may be running an unsealed bearing. So um, there is an oiling port on the top of here now, conservatively, I'd say you'd want anywhere between three to six drops of oil uh, every five hours. So we'd be doing that at uh, the same time we're doing all of this up here. However, having said that, typically they are replaced with a, um, with a sealed bearing, so you shouldn't have to worry about it. The next item for lubrication is gonna be our front roller. Now that's something typically here at my place I don't lubricate, essentially because I don't want oil out of my lawn but um, you need to do your own uh, risk reward and cost benefit analysis on that one as to whether you're gonna lubricate that or not. Uh, be that as it may, uh, you know, they're recommending six drops of oil either side by the end cap every five hours. The next spot for lubrication is gonna be our height adjuster here. Now this one catches a few punters off guard as it did me for the first year, but the recommendations are six drops every five hours as well. I'm not quite there. I don't adjust my height of cut very often, However, if you are sort of, you know, going between your front yard and your backyard and, and adjusting your height of cut, you know, maybe every second or third mow, something like that, uh, it may be very well important for you to keep that well lubricated. I'm only sort of once or twice a season. So um, yeah, uh, that's, that's sort of where I'm at, but our recommendations are every three hours. The final item for lubrication is gonna be our chains and sprockets inside the chain case here. Now, recommendations are uh, to oil them every 10 hours or so. Um, obviously, again, that's going to be dependent on mowing frequency and duration. And uh, I like to use a motorcycle chain lubricant. I, I use this gear here from Penrite. Um, but yeah, you know, any chain lubricant will do. The final maintenance item we're going to cover off on the old Scotty today is arguably the most important. So when we consider things like maintenance cost reduction and plant health, maintaining a nice sharp real embed knife is unparalleled. So if we need to replace both of those, um, say for example, through improper adjustment, I wouldn't expect much change out of, you know, six or 700 bucks. Essentially, you know, we need to get the new parts and then send them away for a grind. So it's a bit of a thing, man, don't do that. So make sure absolutely every time you go out to mow, you're checking your reel to bed knife adjustment. So we send out our reel for uh, a grind for two reasons. Number one is uh, obviously to maintain a nice sharp edge. So we get a nice clean cut, but uh, also it's to return our cylinder to a cylindrical shape. So sometimes what we can see throughout the growing season is wear on one side more than the other. 
and we have this slight shape where it goes, instead of a cylinder, we've got more of a, a conical shape, which is no good, man. So, um, so that's why we send it away for a grind. And second of all is going to be plant health. So as opposed to like a rotary mower where we've got a tearing action across the top of our grass blades, a cylinder mower provides more of a shearing action, sort of more like scissors, and it provides a nice clean cut to the top of our turf blade. And that, uh, that therefore reduces stress on the plant and increases plant health. So yeah, that's, that's kind of why we use cylinder mowers, not only to, you know, to put stripes in our lawn, <laughs> that's important, don't get me wrong, but, uh, but it's also to increase plant health. So um, unfortunately, what I can't provide is, is sharpening intervals because there are, there are too many variables to consider. You know, you've got uh, your turf variety, how much square meters you've got, you know, are you accidentally mowing things like sticks and, um, and leaves, things like that. You know, are you maintaining a playing surface whereby you're top dressing regularly? You know, that might introduce more sand into your reel and bed knife, you know, bluntening the edge a bit quicker. So yeah, unfortunately I can't provide, uh, provide sharpening intervals. And, and nor can I provide like a backlapping interval either, because that's sort of like a dark art, man, eh? <laughs> you know, it's sort of like a suck it and see thing. So, um, so backlapping is not there to replace a grind. You know, it's only there to try and maintain the edge. So uh, unfortunately, yeah, I can't provide recommendations there. But what I can provide are things to be on the lookout for. So first of all, if you notice a reduction in the quality of your cut. So um, do you notice grass blades that are going uncut? Or um, say for example, the next day after you've mowed, do you see like a white or a brown hue across the top of your lawn? Uh, essentially, that's a poor cut quality. Uh, furthermore, grinding, like if, if you notice like your cutting action is a lot louder or you have to adjust your reel down to your bed knife so far as to create this grinding noise and you're still not cutting paper, yeah man, it's time for a sharpen, eh? So keep that in the back of your mind in your maintenance program. Rightio, let's take this out, go for a run.
well done. Mate, the Scotty is performing well for me. You know, you keep up the regular maintenance and you know, she shouldn't be giving you any dramas. So uh, at the completion of a mow, you know, you might consider knocking off all of the grass clippings and snot that somehow seems to gather on top of the lawnmower. <laughs> you know, you don't want it migrating to areas that it shouldn't be or, uh, or starting to rust. So, you know, you might use an air compressor or a rag, something like that, to knock off all of the, all of the clippings. Some people as well like to use a little bit of oil on the reel and the bed knife just to try and um, reduce oxidization while it's not in use. I would exercise caution there just because you don't want to introduce too much oil to the plant over that time. Uh, if you are going to do it, maybe consider something like a lanolin oil that's organic as opposed to something that's synthetic. Um, I definitely do it though when I'm mothballing the unit for winter time. That way, therefore, you know, reducing the, the oxidization on the face of the reel and the bed knife and just keeping it in decent nick over winter time. But yeah. Um, also, when it comes to oiling, uh, I like to do it at the end of a mow. So when I used to operate plant and stuff back in the day, uh, I'd grease up at the end of a shift because um, it kind of increases the viscosity of your lubrication material. Um, you know, the grease flows a lot easier, the oil penetrates a lot better, and, um, and you get a decent coverage. But you know, you can do it at the start of a mow, man. That's completely up to you, just so long as it gets done. Alrighty, if you enjoyed the video, please, Give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You guys do me a wicked man favor and take it easy. I'll chat you wrong.